Have you ever turned down an invitation from somebody and later really regretted it? Has someone ever invited you to do something and in the moment, for whatever reason, you, you, you rejected it, you declined it, you said no, but then after the fact, you really regretted it? I know I've been there. And one moment as I reflected on these readings, it took me all the way back to second grade. Some of those things kind of stay with you, don't they? <laughs> Some of those early memories. I remember, we'll, we'll say her name, Sally. Sally came to school one day and had birthday party invitations for everybody in the class. Everybody in the class got one, and I got it, and I'm thinking about, should I go to this party? And I'm thinking to myself, in my second grade mind, I said, well, Sally's maybe not quite as cool as me. I know there's a lot of other people in this class cooler than me for sure, so maybe I should consult with them. So I remember I went to this group of guys who seemed to be like the cool guys, and I said, hey, so what do y'all think about Sally's birthday party? And they said, dude, no way. I said, are you going to go? And then my insecure second grade self kind of kicked in, and I remember I just took the invitation and ripped it up and said, what does this look like? <laughs> you all hate me now. <laughs> it was bad. It was a bad move. And uh, I remember, sadly, caught a glimpse of this from across the, the class. Tears started coming. I was in the hall before too long, getting chewed out by the teacher. Wrote out a conduct report that I had to go home and get signed by my parents so they knew what I had done with that invitation. It took me a week and a half to get that thing signed because I was so afraid to tell my parents what I had done. And finally, they threatened me with detention, and I finally got it signed. Apologized to Sally. It's amazing some of these things that can stick with us, but one of those things in that moment made me realize the consequence of disgracefully rejecting an invitation. And it also gets you to think about why we turn some invitations down. In my second grade self, I was afraid of not being cool. There's many layers of cool in our life, right? But I think it all comes from a fear of not being accepted on one level or another. And so you think in your own life you've been invited to do something, but because this person's personality is different, or maybe their social standing is different, or maybe their ethnicity or their race is different, or maybe their socioeconomic status is different than you, we hesitate to accept an invitation because we wonder, will I be accepted? There's a lot of reasons we turn down invitations. Another one, I think, many times is we're just too busy, right? You ever turn down an invitation because you're just too busy? Another reason I think we turn down some is we're afraid that a better invitation might come along. I think the hip term for that is FOMO. Have you heard this? Fear of missing out. It's very hard to pin down young people today to commit to something two or three days in advance because like, text me the information, Father. I'll let you know. There might be something better that comes my way. I was just catching up with a buddy of mine from college, and we went on a study abroad to uh, Chile in Latin America. And we were reflecting as one of the few times in high school and college we didn't have cell phones. And we said it was a strange time because you had to make plans verbally in advance to do something. And so we'd finish class, and if you wanted to see somebody, you'd have to say, I'll meet you at this park at this time. And then you were kind of committed. Because if you didn't show up, that other person would just be sitting there without you. Now, I'm not saying after the last mass, one of the students said, well, Father, do we just have to accept every invitation that comes our way? And I'm not saying that. You know, that's part of the art of life is figuring out, okay, what can I do and what can I not do? But it's worth considering what are our motivations and the invitations that we accept and decline. And even more so when we think about are there invitations that God has given us that we've turned down for whatever reason? And these are invitations that are different that come in just our day-to-day -day life because when God invites us to do something, it's necessarily good for us. When He reaches out to us, it's necessarily because He wants to bless us. And every time God reaches out to us and invites us, He's leading us to one thing and it's what the prophet Isaiah prophesizes about in the first reading. 
He says there that on the mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples rich foods and choice wines. On the mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all people rich foods and choice wines. He's talking about heaven. And he's talking about God's desire for the realities of heaven to be made manifest here on earth as it is in heaven. This reality in which we're all in communion with God and all peoples of all backgrounds are at the same banquet eating the same rich foods and the same choice wines. If God ever invites us to do anything, it's going to lead us into deeper friendship with Him, but also deeper friendship and communion with the people around us. And so it's worth considering in our lives, how does God reach out to us to invite us to be part of His plan for redeeming the world and preparing us for heaven? The first way that God invites us, the first way that He speaks out to us is in prayer. He nudges us in those silent moments of prayer to do this or do that. I know in my own life a very powerful moment came. I was 15 years old. I was at a non-denominational summer camp. I was out in the woods praying. I was holding the Bible as I was encouraged to do. And all of a sudden, a thought popped into my mind that had never been there before. And it was an image of myself dressed like this, standing like this, behind an altar like that. I've been Catholic my whole life. I had altar served since third grade. I had never once thought about being a priest. But in that moment, a peace, a joy, an excitement washed over me that I had never known before. And deep down in my soul, I knew there was a sense of invitation that God was inviting me to be that. A peace came over me, an excitement came over me that lasted probably a good 60 seconds. And then all of a sudden my brain kicked into gear and I thought to myself, wait a minute. That means I'm never getting married. That means I'm not having kids. That means I'm wearing black every day. In Alabama, (laughs) in the summer, 100 degrees, humidity. Ah! (laughs) Went from the most sublime moment of my life to the most panic and fear-ridden moment of my life. And the fear that creeped into that moment, that invitation that was laid before me, I think is a fear we can all relate to many times when God speaks to us. And as God invites us to the banquet, where his own son is being married and there's rich food and choice wine, somehow we fear it will be totally lame. It'll be the most boring party we've ever been to. It will suck the joy out of our life if we really accept God's invitation in our life. And even though we believe God is good and he loves us, sometimes when he challenges us to consider something, whether it's big or small, we fear that it will rob us of our joy. And because of that, many times we will reject that invitation. I'm glad that the Lord kept offering that invitation for the years to come. But I wonder sometimes, what if I just never responded to that invitation? What would my life be? I wouldn't be here. Some of you are like, well, I don't know. (laughs) But that's something to think about. When God speaks to us in prayer, how do we respond? Is there fear involved in responding? The second thing is God doesn't always speak to us directly, but sometimes He puts people in our life to get our attention. Amen? Sometimes God will put somebody in your path. Sometimes it's somebody close to you. Sometimes it's a stranger, but they'll say something to you. Or they will do something that will call you deeper in your faith. One experience that came to mind as I was meditating on this was in seminary. My best friend, a guy named Alex, he's a priest now in Scranton, Pennsylvania. That's a real place where real people live. 
And one day I was sitting in his dorm room and I was venting to him because I'd gotten in student government for the seminary. And I was lamenting to him that nobody was responding to my emails. Nobody was showing up to my meetings on time. Nobody was responding to my calls. And as I am lamenting all these things, he starts laughing and smirking at me, which made me even more mad. And finally, I stopped and I said, what is so funny about this? This is very important. He said, Vic, I hate to tell you, but you are what you hate. I said, excuse me? He said, you are what you hate. I said, what do you mean? He said, Vic, I've been in seminary with you for five years. You have never once read an email sent out by the seminary. You have never once showed up for time for anything. And you never return people's calls. You are what you hate. I wanted to kill him. I wanted to punch him in the head, throw him off a cliff, and never talk to him again. Exactly the reaction of the servants who came to the people, invite them to the banquet. What did they do? (laughs) They beat them, they killed them, they got rid of them. Because sometimes God puts somebody in our life to help call us deeper. But calling us deeper makes us realize where we are. And we don't always like what it looks like when somebody holds up a mirror in front of our face, do we? We want to break that mirror. Or get a new one. But God sends these people into our lives because He loves us, because He's calling us into deeper communion with them and deeper communion with other people. And so do not be afraid when God sends somebody with a word for us. And finally, God doesn't always speak to us directly. He doesn't always send somebody to speak to us But many times he speaks to us through the circumstances of our lives. We always have circumstances unfolding before us. And St. Paul says this about circumstances today. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret that I can do all things in him who strengthens me. My God will fully supply whatever you need. In every circumstance of our life, how aware are you that God is there with you? Loving you, walking with you, shepherding you. Whether it's through verdant pastures, whether it's through the dark valley. How aware are we in each circumstance of our life that Christ is there with us, walking with us, offering us all the strength and all the direction that we need? I think many times we can just forget that He's there with us. And this is a central part of our faith. I'll tell one last story. I was in seminary. I was studying in Rome. My younger sister Charlotte is a junior at the University of Alabama. And she's coming to one of those points where she's freaking out because what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Anyone ever been there? Anyone there right now, currently? Don't be ashamed. It's okay. (laughs) All of us who are students, we don't know. So we're having this conversation. And at some point I said, well, if you could do anything when you graduate, what would you do? What do you have a heart for? She thought about it. She said, if I could do anything, I would love to live in Latin America. I'm a Spanish major. I'd love to be really good at Spanish. I'd love to somehow live in some Catholic community with other people my age. And I'd love to do something with the poor so that I can grow in my faith and just have that experience. I don't even know what it would look like, but that's that's what she came up with. I said, well, that's something. So we said goodbyes, we said a prayer, hung up. The very next day, I finished my classes, I walked into the cafeteria of the seminary. And as I walked into the cafeteria, there was a priest who had challenged us a couple weeks before. He said, you know, when you go into the cafeteria, there's always a tendency to just sit with the same group of people, your buddies. He said, but think about every time when you walk in the cafeteria, just sit with the first place that's open and ask the Holy Spirit to just help you to encounter somebody new. Make a new relationship. Be open to the things that God might want to do. 
So I walked and I said, God, where do you want me to sit? And the first place I saw open was in the corner of the room right over here. There was one chair left. I sit down in the chair and the guy sitting next to me was a priest from Colombia. And we start talking to one another. And I said, what brings you to Rome? He goes, well, I'm here. I'm on my way to Chicago to serve as a priest, but I just came here from Chile. I said, oh, I spent some time there in college. He lived in the same place. We both live in Santiago. I said, why were you in Santiago? He said, I was part of this new movement of young people called Hearts Home, in which young Catholic people live in community. They all learn to speak Spanish, and they speak Spanish together, and they go out and do ministry to the poor. And he starts talking to me more and more that one of the girls he met was the first American girl ever to participate in this worldwide movement. And the more he's explaining this, the more my jaw is kind of dropping. And at some point he said, is there something wrong with what I'm saying? I said, Father, I just have to tell you, I was talking to my sister last night, and point for point, this is everything that she said she was looking for. He gave me the contact information for this group. I gave it to my sister. She wrote it on a post-it note. It sat in her dorm room for a year and a half. And finally, she responded to that invitation. She ended up living in Lima, Peru with this movement for a year and a half. Life-changing experience that defines her to this day. All of that happened because God revealed Himself an invitation through the circumstances of our life. But the reason I was able to see it, the reason I was able to hear it was because of the advice of that priest of saying, open yourself up to the guidance of the Holy Spirit in every circumstance. And so my challenge for you today is you go through your days, one prayer you might not think to pray is, God, what do you want to do today? We tend to tell God what we want to do in our day, right? God, I'm going to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want you to bless it all. But how often do we say to God, God, what do you want to do today? Where do you want me to be? Open my eyes to see the invitations that you lay before me today in my heart. In the people you put in my path, and the circumstances they unfold, show me, God, where you want me to be today. Always mindful that he wants us to be on the mountain with God and with all peoples, eating the same rich foods, drinking the same choice wines, celebrating the love that God has created us with and the love that he calls us to share.